All right, y'all, if you're wondering when should I start paid marketing, when should I start paid ads when you're marketing online, right? You're getting going with your evergreen marketing. You are doing some SEO. You're getting some content online, maybe building a few backlinks, but you go, I want leads quicker. Well, in this episode of the Evergreen Marketing Show, we're going to be walking through when and how and why you should launch your first paid ads if you haven't already. And we're going to show kind of a little bit of a different take on it than a lot of people are thinking. So, uh, Brady, dude, welcome to the Evergreen Marketing Show, our first official, official one. Thanks, Trevor. Which I'm pumped about, buddy. Yeah, this is going to be a fun one. Um, I'm excited about this because um, whether you realize it or not, SEO is a long-term game. And so a lot of people are asking, like, how can I get leads in the door fast? You can't just stop all your other marketing while you're working on your SEO, stacking bricks, and expect leads to come in. So that's what we're talking about today, supplemental lead gen. Uh this episode is brought to you by Carrot's Campaign Tracking Links, where our software makes it easier to understand what's working in your marketing. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. But Trevor, um, talk to me about how I need how I can get leads in the door fast. Let's say I just signed up for Carrot. Mm. I got my website built. In the last couple of episodes, we talked about how to, how to launch your site, how to structure it, that sort of thing. Yep. We're going to talk in, in the coming weeks about keyword research and SEO strategy, but right now it's like, dude, I need leads. Mm. I need leads because I need to close some deals. Um, got shiny object syndrome. There's yep. Facebook ads. There's Google PPC. There's all these things. Every every coach is telling me I need to do. Why PPC and why mm. Facebook and and when do I need to tackle those? Yep, dude. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna start at the customer journey. Okay, I'm gonna start at the customer journey and. And this is something all that I feel that people don't talk enough about in this industry. They talk about marketing channels, right? They say mm-hmm. SEO, PPC, PPL, those are great marketing channels. But what very, very few people talk about is when do you use those marketing channels? And yeah. actually, the way that you use each marketing channel is completely different based on the part of the customer journey that people are in. So I'm going to bring up something on the visual if you're watching on YouTube or here in in the group, but uh, I'm going to to kind of help you guys imagine and picture in your eyes what the journey of a customer looks like. What does that journey of a customer look like? And at a high level, a customer, and I'm going to pull this puppy up here. I don't know if I have the right one here. And at a high level, where are we at? Where are we at? Ah, didn't have the right thing. At a high level, it looks something like this i'm going to draw it here on the picture okay if you can pull that up there Braden. at at a high level guys on the very far left and you can't read these words right now um but on the very far left you've got your audience right so a customer in their journey moves left to right Uh, they first are aware that they have a problem they're doing a search in some sort of way that they're trying to solve that problem if they're a house seller they're like oh i need to sell my house i'm going through foreclosure or Uh, I have this hoarder house I want to take care of, right? And so then they start to search. Now, as they get further and further down here, which I'm just going to rewrite that as decision. I don't have the fancy one. I don't have the fancy one up here in front of me right now. Um, But decision, that's where someone gets closer to that decision, right? That's where they know of the options. They know that there's an investor or an agent that they can work with. They know that there's multiple ways to solve it. But now they need to make a decision. What's that middle one, lead? Um, yeah, let me actually see. Let me riff on this a little bit. Braden, the, the graphic that you, you sent through me a little bit earlier. Yeah, should be available. Thank you, thank you. Okay, it should be open there. Okay. Um, e- either way, guys, the Braden will pull this bad boy up for me here. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, guys. We're gonna work on the on the technical part. And that's that's on me. I didn't have the thing pulled up earlier. Braden's gonna shoot this over to me. My bad. So what what we want to do right here when when we're digging in is, and I might even have this on the video marketing jumpstart. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, there we cool. go. That's what I'm talking about. Attract, convert, close. Exactly. So this is your customer journey, guys. The customer journey always works left to right. Okay, it always works left to right. They come in aware that they have a problem or a challenge, and they exit on the other end, being a customer, hopefully. But we need to be doing our marketing backwards, right? We need to actually be doing our marketing backwards from right to left, from the part where they're getting ready to become a customer. We need to be building trust. They're moving towards close. That decision phase. They're exactly. making a decision. They're aware of you already. 100%. And so when we're thinking about our marketing, what a lot of people do is they think about Google PPC or Facebook ads way up here into these phases. They start to go, well, let me put out some ads that are attracting brand new people who don't know about me at all. 
right? What, what we're going to talk about on this episode is we're going to talk about why it's actually critical that we start on the right side of that customer journey right here. And we're going to talk about what types of ads you should be running on Facebook and Google on the, on the close side of it as we get way, way, way close to someone actually becoming a customer. So that's where we should be starting. Okay. So when, whenever you're thinking of your marketing channels, we always should be thinking about marketing channel by the stage of the customer, not just the channel as a whole. So starting with the that close makes in mind, that yeah, makes starting sense. with the end of that journey in mind, what yeah. do I need to do to build trust and get someone over the hump so they want to work with us? And that's where we're going to start with our Google ads and our Facebook ads. Okay. So you've got your website up. You need the website up because the website's a conversion tool. Without yep. that, where are you funneling your traffic to? You're not going to be able to close leads. Mm. You're not going to be able to turn visitors into leads. You can't get leads. Um, so let's dive. You want to dive into PPC or Facebook first? As let's far do, as working backwards. Let's do Facebook first. And the, and the main reason yeah. for that, uh, the main reason for that here, y'all. So how, what are the first, th- what are the first paid ads you should do? Right? So if you're doing direct mail, if you're doing cold calling, if you're doing, um, Google PPC, if you're doing anything at all like that, you're doing referral marketing and they're going to your website. We always want to make sure that we're now putting a, a Facebook pixel on them so that that Facebook pixel can follow them over to Facebook and say, Hey, this person has been on my website. And if you know that the person has been on your website, now we can actually serve them up with really, really good content, some testimonials to, to further that relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And so a quick question for everybody that's watching this, like how many of you are doing any type of marketing right now that you're working your butt off for, you're paying for, you're working your butt off for with referrals and just networking, but they get to your site and now you might lose them, right? You're not, you're not setting up what we call remarketing or retargeting. Mm-hmm. So that's the first thing. And when we, when we look at this channel from the Facebook side of things, right, the retargeting or uh, the retargeting or marketing, it's going to look something like this. I usually like to have two to three testimonial ads. Okay. So two to three testimonial ads. And ideally it's like each one of those ads is on a different objection. Mm. It's objection one, objection two, objection three. Um, as a real estate investor, it's probably going to be like, they're going to lowball me. We'll bring in a really, really killer video ad if you have one that basically talks about, hey, Brady bought my house and he paid me a fair price. He paid me exactly what I was wanting. Yeah. Or he paid me more than the other person over can here. Can you actually close in as quick of a time as you th- as you say you can? Can exactly. you actually close in a week? Yep, exactly. So that that's like close time. You know, that's offer price. Yeah. And there's probably something else, which is just general trust. You know, they're a person that you can trust. They are going to follow through on that. Mm-hmm. So I would do two to three video ads there. Then I would do one over here that's another objection, but a piece of content. Right? It could be a blog post on your website. It could be a video on your website. It could be just a video where you educate people on the process. Mm-hmm. Hey, how does this process work? And why is it different than a, a traditional process with an agent? Or how is it better for many people than working with a traditional iBuyer? Just a piece of content that eliminates an objection for them. Yeah. So that's where I would start, guys. Like, as far as paid ads go, start there before you ever launch a paid ad going after people who don't already know what you are. Yeah. Because that's your, it's going to be your highest ROI ads. It's going to be a low dollar um, ad. It's not going to be 300 bucks a month. It's probably going to be 50 bucks a month. Yeah. You know, kind of a thing. So go, we have a, I, I'd imagine we have a article on the help center, help.care.com. If you go there, just search for pay, face. Facebook, Facebook pixel. <laughs> uh, you can learn about what Trevor's talking about. Putting a pixel on your website. It's not as complicated as it sounds mm-hmm. and go set up your Facebook ads. It's funny. Cause like I, and I think most people think about Facebook ads as like, like an ad, like just trying to get someone's attention for the very first time. Yeah. Yeah. But as consumers, we're super familiar with like, Oh, we talked about this product. Mm-hmm. Oh, we went to their website. Now I'm about to get hammered with their ads. Like yep. I was Googling Casper mattresses. Now I'm getting the Casper mattress ad. It's like, mm-hmm. Hey, you know, we know you're shopping for mattresses. Yep. That's kind of what we're talking about. Right. hundred percent. Yep. hundred percent. Nice. Um, when in the first 30 to 60 days, would you recommend someone start those, uh, start Facebook retargeting like right after you launch your website? Yeah. I mean, I, I would get the darn pixel on immediately. Like when, when you're building out your website, get that pixel on because with Facebook, you have to have a certain amount of people in your audience mm-hmm. before they'll actually serve up ads. So if you put that pixel on, you have five people who've landed on your website, Facebook probably won't let you serve up ads to those five people. Yeah. And, um, and so you, you've got to, you got to have it on there for a little while and start to get that stacked up and. And what, what, I w- what I would do at the start is really lengthen out the amount of time that that pixel is tracking people. You know, make it six months. So you're tracking people throughout the whole past six months so you can stay in front of them. Make it 12 months. Yeah. Um, but 
don't make it like some people make it a 30 day or 90 day where mm-hmm. the people fall out of that audience after 90 days. If you're getting a lot of traffic coming in, great. But especially as you're getting started, make it as long as you possibly can to keep people in that audience and serving it up for them. But yeah, okay. get it get it in place immediately. And then as you start to get several hundred website visitors who have that pixel, then you can start to get the ads up. Okay, that makes sense. So get the pixel on there immediately, and then you can start doing retargeting. PPC is a little bit different, though, because you're this is a, this is a higher risk. You're spending a lot more money per lead. Your website needs to be dialed in. Um, you need to have your, your customization, your localization, your, your credibility on there. Mm-hmm. You need to beef it up with some testimonials. When do I start spending money on PPC? Yep. Yeah, so for, for me, the rule of thumb... When, when to start spending money on PPC outside of Facebook retargeting, right? It's number one, mm-hmm. right out of the gates. If you're doing any type of marketing at all, if you're doing direct mail, cold calling, driving for dollars, radio, mm-hmm. TV, especially if you're doing any outbound marketing like radio, TV, or direct mail, you need to start spending on PPC immediately, but for your own brand. For your brand. And right. dude, that's something most people aren't doing. I'm talking with some of our highest level clients in our Epic program that are, that are literally bringing in 20 deals a month. And we're talking with them and they're not, they're not advertising on their brand. Yeah. And so if I, if I am your competitor, the, one of the very first ads I'm going to be dropping is I'm going to be pulling up my top, top five competitors in that market. And I'm going to advertise for your company name and the owner's company name. If they're in any of their ads, I'm going to advertise for all that. That's the first stuff I'm advertising for. Yeah. Um, but do it in an ethical way, right? I'm not going to, I'm not going to like literally put your company name in my ad. We don't right. do that, but I'm going to be bidding on your brand name. And then I'm going to be having some sort of copy in there that that gives people pause when they're going to actually go work with that company. Right. And it could be, you know, something like the highest rated house, you know, cash house buyer in in mm. Biloxi. Yeah. Or it could say, you know, 455 five star reviews from local home sellers who sold quickly. Which is going to be something. cheaper. It's going to be a lower cost than the more broad terms like sell my house fast, Roseburg, Oregon, correct? Could be. Sometimes for some reason, Google actually jacks those up on you because oh, no one's bidding on them. Yeah. So sometimes they're really, really, really cheap. Huh. And sometimes they're more than they should be. Yeah. So so just to kind of recap what you're saying, if, if I'm an investor and I'm, I'm sending out direct mail, uh, Brady buys houses, and I just sent 2,000 postcards to Roseburg, mm-hmm. um, I need to be launching a PPC campaign so that when people are Googling, hey, Brady buys houses, to just to guarantee i'm coming up at the top of search Mm -hmm. results in uh, the google ppc ads yeah and and people ask the question like aren't you cannibalizing your your own ranking that someone would have valid question it's a way valid question and we've talked about it internally at carrot too right where we we invest a good bit of money on google ppc and the majority of the revenue that comes through they're actually brand searches Mm. so it looks amazing because a lot of revenue is coming through but the vast majority of that revenue is because someone actually did a Google search for our brand name or our brands and then click the ad. Mm. And so you go, well, why do that? Wouldn't they have found you anyway? Right. Um, Are yeah, you they, paying when you could have just not paid for it, not put an ad there, and then yeah. they found you organically? Which is valid, right? Yeah. It, it, it's valid. Um, what, what we'll find, though, is number one, as long as we're advertising for our own brand, it starts to squeeze out any competitors who might want to. So yeah. I look at it as more defense at the start. It's yeah. like, let me do defense so that person doesn't feel tempted to advertise there because now they can jump above my organic ranking for myself. Yeah, that makes sense. You're not losing leads to the competition. It's yep. defense. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Sweet. Um, let's talk a little bit about, um, so we have the timing. We understand like when to start your Facebook, when to get your Facebook pixel up, when to launch Facebook ads. Um, when did we talk, did we mention when to do PBC? We're talking about why. Dude, we so did. yeah, for... If if you're doing any if you're doing any oh, outbound yeah. marketing, you okay. should start PPC for your brand name immediately. Right. But as far as like more practical, let's say that's just that's just an assumption. Yeah, you're we're, we're already doing that, right? Yeah. For me, it's it's as as soon as you have the ability to close leads quickly, respond to leads quickly, because you need to respond to these PPC leads really really fast. It right. can't be like a day. Yeah. It needs to be when they come in five minutes. So if you don't have that ability then I would probably hold off on PPC for now because you're going to be wasting a lot of ad spend. Yeah. And then those aren't going to turn into deals for you for not replying back quick. And the next thing is you should have at least, at least, um, I would say $5,000 to where you're ready to invest into Google PPC um, 
if you have less than 5,000 or you're not willing to invest up to 5K, then I would say it's probably not something you're ready to start yet. Yeah. And it's similar to direct mail, right? Like direct mail, you're not going to do $300 in direct mail right. <laughs> and go, man, I, I hope this works. Right. With PPC, it's the same thing. If, you, if you're kind of making your marketing budget, right? We talk about marketing budget a lot here at Karen because a lot of people will start a paid ad channel and then they'll quit. They'll quit mm -hmm. too early. And so if you guys, if you guys trust the math, the basics of it is you take your average profit per deal, you divide it by four. Uh, cause when you're doing paid marketing, ideally you want to see like a four to one return, mm -hmm. right? A four to one return. And that's in real estate. That's in other businesses too. We can dive in on a whole nother episode on budgeting and going yeah. deep on that topic. But let's make that assumption. You take your average profit per deal, or if you're an HVAC company, you take your average, um, lifetime value of a customer. You know, if you're an agent, an average lifetime value of a customer, because mm -hmm. they're probably gonna do multiple transactions with you. Um, you divide that by four. And then that basically says, this is what I'm willing to spend for marketing to get that customer. Because ideally we want to see that four to one return. Mm. If your average profit per deal is 20K, um, divide that by four, it's 5K. You should be willing to spend up to $5,000 to get that customer. Yeah. So if you don't have the 5K allocated as a budget, then uh, wait, wait on this channel. Yeah. And and get get that first deal or two done, stack up some money, and then move into this channel as you go. Yeah, and I feel like you know that's a good point. Like, make sure you have the money before you dive into it. I feel like another thing is is be prepared to spend the appropriate amount of time on it. Like yeah. way too many people go into this. Like, I mean, you, you've probably heard it a thousand times. If you had a nickel for every time you heard like. Well, I tried it for a month. It didn't work. So yep. I stopped it. And it's like yep. three to six months, you know, like I would say minimum six minimum? months on any new channel, yeah. any new channel, especially with Facebook ads. It's like, you yep. can't go into it and be like, okay, let's try this for a month or two, mm. see if it worked and then kill it. Yeah. You have to be willing to stick it out for the long term. And dude, a lot of it too. Like this is something I was working with another one of our Epic members today. They moved over from an agency to taking their ads in house. And this is a company that does a lot of revenue, mm. right? Like 20 plus deals a month. And I don't know if this is the challenge with their campaign, but one thing that happens is even if you're just starting a brand new campaign from scratch, you need to give Google and Facebook time to actually take your data and feed it into their algorithm to go have that data work for you. Now, what, is, what does that mean? If, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm an agency, or we have this data internally at Carrot too, if I'm an agency and we have 35 clients and together with those 35 clients, we're spending $100,000 a month in ads. And we have, you know, I'm just making this up. Let's say we have 300,000 people clicking our ads every single month. Yeah. And we're getting, you know, 10,000 leads a month. Inside of Google, I can do like a master, a master level, basically agency account where all of the data from all those are, are piled into this one kind of, this one pool, you could call it. Yeah. So when I run a campaign for Bobby over here, Bobby gets the benefit of all of the data from the other 35 campaigns i'm running hmm. so google can go out and find more of those ideal leads faster right so if you're starting a campaign from scratch you're not going to get google working with you on that algorithm until you get some real clicks and some leads coming through and that might take 90 days six months to get the algorithm cranking it has to have time to learn in other words yep yeah yep. okay um let's talk about we could talk about keywords mm -hmm. for a little bit some of the keywords you start with if you're doing ppc uh, related to brand search, and then we could talk about how to track them, where to send your traffic to, maybe yeah. share some data. Um, let me pull these keywords up real quick. Let's get it. Okay, dogs. Okay, I'm gonna run through these, Trevor. Let me know your thoughts. So we got uh, cash offer home buyers, companies that buy houses. Uh, we buy your home for cash. We buy houses. Mm. Fast home buyers sell my house fast. We buy ugly houses. Some of the starter keywords yep. for a PPC campaign. And dude, so let's kind of give a little bit of extra context here too. So one yeah. thing guys that you got that we're going to be so pumped about bringing to this evergreen marketing show is we're going to be bringing data and we're yeah. going to be bringing data that like, we're, we're not going to be talking and teaching just theory here. Yep. And that's so much of what you'll find on the internet. There's a, a dude who has experience with it, with doing it once for himself and three times for other people. Now he's the expert in the Facebook groups. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, and I literally saw that dude in our Facebook group the other day and I love you to death, but it's like, we're going to bring data in at scale and just show you guys, Hey, this is what works at scale, but this is actually, then what we want you guys to make the decision based off the data. So yeah. what Brady just shared there is from running a campaign, uh, came from internal campaigns that Brendan and our team ran, uh, not for us, but for customers that we're running. 
Um, and it was across a good amount of clicks, right? It wasn't like thousands of leads in this particular one, but this was across hundreds of leads for sure. And so uh, the cash offer home buyer, um, the cash offer home buyer keyword that you had mentioned, mm -hmm. it got the most conversions. Now, because this campaign, of course, was probably really tightly focused on the most motivated type of lead, right? Mm -hmm. It got the most conversions. That lead cost was about $300 per lead in this market. So you might be getting a lower lead cost, but this was a, a tightly focused campaign. This wasn't national. If you're going national, you can get lead costs for way less than this. Mm. You can get lead costs under hundred bucks because you're going to be picking up leads from all the little fringe areas, not just the exact little boundary that you've set yeah. in Google, right? So that conversion rate was 29% on that page. 29% of everyone who clicked that link for cash offer home buyers keywords turned into a lead in mm. this campaign. That's a lot. That's super high. Right. And that doesn't even, and that, that does include phone calls. So 300 bucks a lead. Those are going to be highly, highly targeted uh, companies that buy houses. Um, we buy your home for cash. We buy houses. These are all ones that are getting good quality leads and they're all between the 200 to around the $300 per lead range in this market. And they're all converting pretty close to 20, I see 23%, 20, almost 24%, 16%, 29%. They're converting pretty good on the mm -hmm. pages. But then as you go down to the more the ones that are more broad, right? Um, sell my home fast, sell my house fast, we buy ugly houses, sell my house fast for cash. Those are a little bit more broad, right? It's not specifically looking for a cash home buyer. They're just like, I want to sell my house quick and for cash. And so if we were to look at that customer journey again, the ones that are like cash home buyer, those are the ones that are in the middle of that customer journey. And so, um, Brady, if you can pull uh, my iPad up and I'll write a few of these things out, uh, guys, go check out the YouTube channel because we're going to be giving you the visuals, but I'll paint the picture for those of you that are listening to the podcast. So if we're doing this from the Google PPC perspective, what keywords we're going to be launching coming out of the gates with is down here at the end of the customer journey. It's your brand related ones. Okay. It's your company. What's your company name? It's company name plus reviews, okay? And then if you have any um, person that's identifiable in your business, the owner, let's say he or she is all over the radio uh, or TV commercials, you're going to put their name here, okay? So the owner's name. Now, as you go up a little bit, this is where they are starting to hone in on a solution, okay? They're, they're seeking a solution, and they already know about some of those solutions. They know cash home buyers exist. Right. Or if you're in HVAC or other services businesses, they know that they're trying to repair their their you know, their heating and cooling system. And now they're actually looking for heating and cooling repair in Roseburg or something mm. like that. Okay. So this here would be your cash home buyers. Okay. This is you know some of those other ones that we were mentioning, uh, companies that buy houses. Uh, that's another keyword that was in there converting pretty good companies that buy houses. Um, it's really saying like, these are people who actually said that they buy homes. Now we go up here and this is more that they have a problem. Okay. They don't really know about the solutions yet. And this is more sell my house, sell my house, sell my house fast, sell my house fast, what to do in pre foreclosure. Yep. We buy houses. That one might kind of be over here a little bit. That one might be in that middle section because they know that there's people that buy houses. They maybe saw the bandit signs. Yeah. Um, but there's a whole bunch of ones here. Sell my hoarder house or whatever it is, right? So the reason, and I'm going to wrap this one toss over to you. The reason this is important when we're thinking about doing our advertising, whether it's on Facebook or Google and when we're starting our, our, our ads, is the further towards the left we get, the, the lower those are going to convert into deals, but the more broad, the more, the more volume we're going to get, right? The further towards the right in the customer journey, we get towards them doing a deal, the higher ROI we're going to get, the higher converting the, all those clicks are going to get, but the lower volume. And so that's why we start at the right side. because they're the highest ROI, the highest, uh, the, the highest ROI, highest quality start there first, nail that. And then we work to the left for the volume. Mm, that makes sense, man. Cool. That's helpful. Um, yeah, another thing I throw in, we mentioned at the beginning of this episode, but if you're doing PPC, make sure you're tracking it. Campaign yep. tracking link, super easy yep. way to track what you're doing. And it's nice because you can go into your carrot dashboard, look at all your campaign tracking links from mm -hmm. your PPC, Facebook ads, whatever you're doing, and just see at a high level, at a yeah. glance, what's working. So that's really powerful. Um, let's talk about real quick, uh, and then we'll jump to the Q&A after this, cool. but where to send paid traffic to. We got a question on this, so we'll, we'll dive mm -hmm. deeper on it in the Q&A. Yep. Um, but this, man, we get this question all the time. Like, 
homepage versus landing page Dude. or some or like a carrot landing page i mean yep. some people will be like do i need to get click funnels or do i need to get whatever you know does it need to be just like super simple so i'm going to share I'm, I'm going to share a test we did um and i'll pull i'll pull some of the stats up on the screen i'll even show some examples okay so at a high level y'all uh, once again I, wa I want you to think about what one thing we're gonna do in the evergreen marketing show is we're gonna go deep teaching people how to market and how to think about market marketing if we only taught you tactics and we didn't teach you the psychology behind it then i think we're not serving you well and so think about from the perspective of let's say a facebook person mm -hmm. someone on facebook they're scrolling through their phone usually it's on their phone they're they're in distraction mode like they're not in i've got a problem i'm trying to solve mode and so you're going to find a lower conversion rate on your facebook traffic because of that reason it might be one in 20 to one in 30 or maybe even one in 40 of your leads that come through facebook potentially might be a deal but probably one in 20 to one in 30. yeah with google ppc it's probably gonna be closer to one in 10 to one in 20 turn into a deal because they're searching for a solution so if you think about the person in that psychology of distraction mode um what type of page and they're almost all on mobile right on facebook yeah what type of page should they go to well it's probably gonna be a landing page over there we've done this test mm -hmm. um and we have found that on Facebook ads, it tends to perform a little bit better, not by a wide margin, but a little bit better right. if you drive to a landing page. And I can show you some examples on the carrot system here using yeah. our landing page builder. On Google PPC, it's a little bit different because for sellers, we still haven't really crossed that major threshold where the vast majority of sellers are coming on mobile. Mm -hmm. A lot of sellers are still coming on desktop searches. Now, if you look at buyers, buyers are almost all mobile these days. So if you look at a seller, the average seller, most of them, or if not right at 50% are still coming through on desktop searches. Okay. So they're in research mode. They're clicking around. They want to see content. A landing page, number one, isn't going to rank for that if you're going organic. But number two, they want information. They want content. Yeah. And we actually found that on Google PPC, it performed just as good, if not better, when you drive to our carrot, you know, high, highly optimized home pages that right. have good uh, conversion or have good credibility built into them. You're going to get a higher conversion from click to lead on a carrot landing page on PPC. Mm -hmm. But what we found was when you go from click to deal and revenue and profit, we actually saw a higher amount of revenue and a much higher ROI in those campaigns when it was sent to a carrot homepage that was optimized well for that, that had a lot of content. I'll show mm -hmm. some examples, some real Le examples. Yeah, right here. leads are turning into deals more often from PPC when sent to a carrot homepage. Yep. So if we can deal. pull this up here, um, Braden, so I'm going to show some data, guys. So this came from, this is a lot of leads, okay? This is not a, a, a little bit of leads, guys. Let me just kind of show some of the data here. Um, it's in, raining leads. Oh, dude, it was it, it was wild. I mean, this was across, I'm pretty sure, over 1,000 leads. Um, but let me look for sure on that data once again. Da, 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 da. So this is just one of the many screenshots here. Uh, so this is hundreds of leads in this one, 68 leads, 74 leads, 61 leads out of hundreds and hundreds of clicks. As we go further into this campaign and there's more testing, you see 113 leads, 108 leads, 93 across these variations. And I can just keep on going down. There's a lot of leads that have came through this, uh, through this test. Okay. It's not just a few, it's not a few dozen, it's uh, nearly a thousand. So the first page that we, that this we, is the homepage versus landing page test. There we right? go. Thank okay. you, Brady. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. So this is that home page versus landing page test and also what what type of page to send to. Mm -hmm. So this is like what the home page would look like and this was the page here that they that they send it to. It wasn't uh, that it, it's not a highly customized page. It's not it doesn't have a bunch of fancy custom stuff. It's pretty much their their good logo at the top with some localized photos put in there and that was pretty much it, right? Like they didn't they didn't go crazy with customizing this page. Yeah. So it wasn't a lot of work. This but isn't it, something that our team spent extra time on. They didn't pay for a concierge service. No. They updated their header image, they got their basic branding in, added localized it a little bit. So it's it's not too far from care out of the box. No, and it's probably got eight hundred to a thousand words in this page. So if you guys are kind of picturing how much words and it does have the navigation. Okay. So the next page, which is the, the winner, this is the variant. Now, um, the, the whole text message uh, thing that came out recently that's requiring people to put on that disclaimer. Yeah. That's something that was not in place when this test was originally ran. So this big old disclaimer by the opt-in box that 
that we're showing visually that was not there during the test. Yeah. So all, all, all those words. So this is a landing page. It didn't have any navigation on it. So people couldn't bounce around very simple, pretty darn short that converted the highest on conversion rate. Okay. But visitor not by, to lead visitor to lead, but not by far. If you look at a couple of the other pages, this is one that was modeled after uh, one of the agencies in the market. And it actually converted lower than all the other ones. And this is variant three. This one came from a friend of mine, Chris Chico. And he's like, I swear by this one on <laughs> Facebook. On Google ads, hmm. this did not perform well on Google ads. Interesting. Uh, it's a lot of copy, not a form at the top. It's a button that when you click the button, you know, a box pops up. And so let me find the data and share the results from this now, like the actual uh, drilled down data and results. So if we were to go up here to look at the, the results here on this one shot, if you look at the variation that won, which was that landing page, and I'm talking visitor to lead, almost 30% of every, every of everybody that, that clicked that to go there became a lead mm -hmm. in this example. The home page um, was 26.58%, so barely, barely a lower conversion rate on the visitor to lead, but it got a marginally higher ROI and profit on the end of the end of the day because on Google PPC, people are in search mode. They wanted to click around. They wanted to see yeah. who you are. They want to see your about page. It's they want to so look at reviews. It's so marginally lower too. It's almost the same. Yeah. Yep. But you get more money out of it at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And then the other variations were 21% and 22 point, or 23.78%. So none of them were wildly terrible. But sending to a, a slim down landing page on our, on our system, if you go to the content tab inside of your carrot account, you go to landing pages, that landing page variation that I just showed you, mm -hmm. the one, you can actually launch that landing page right now in our system. We took that variation and made it a landing page you can launch today. That's awesome. And so we're taking our data, working through, and I'm just you know live on the screen showing how I would do this, but I'm just in 14 seconds here, I literally emulated that, con that high converting landing page right on the carrot system. You'll come in here, choose your form, uh, grab that form right there that you want to be the primary form, update your content, throw in some credibility towards the bottom of that page, launch it live and test it and see what happens. Mm. Nice, man. Cool. All right. Well, that wraps up. That's that's some good data. I think that that's pretty much the best, most thorough way we can answer that is like homepage versus landing page. Hopefully that settles that. If there's any debates in the future, come back and watch the podcast. So we're going to dive in insanely deep on that topic in the future. We're going to bring the data all the way to deal. So we're going to bring yeah. the data all the way to deal. Since we own Investor Fuse, we have that data now. Uh, and that's going to be a fun one. Nice. Yep. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for um, listening to the podcast. If you're listening to the podcast version, that's a wrap for this episode. Um, we will see you next week. We're going to switch over to answer questions in the Facebook group. And um, if Subscribe you're not in the Facebook group, yeah, join us at community.carrot.com, get in the Facebook group, and look us up on YouTube, uh, Carrot Evergreen Marketing Show. Just search for that. And, um, yeah. Come join us. Awesome, awesome.